In the North Central, the tempo of the governorship election would not be lesser in velocity as political gladiators slog it out to occupy the coveted positions. In Nasarawa State, incumbent governor and candidate of the All Progressive Congress APC, Abdullah Isuli, faces an uphill task against former lawmaker and PDP candidate David Ombugadu. But a protracted crack in the walls of APC following a conflict of interest between the national chairman of the party, Abdullah Adamu, and a former governor of the state, Maru Tanku Amakura, may have weakened the strength of the APC in Nasarawa state. The party's votes could be further depleted with the new Nigerian People's Party, NMPP, and the Social Democratic Party, SDP, also fielding Muslim candidates. The two may end up dividing votes for APC and handing over the much coveted prize to the PDP. In Benue State, the contest will pitch the candidates of APC, Reverend Father Hyson Aliyah, up against the PDP candidate Titus Uba and the rising sensation of Labour Party and its candidate Heman Hembe in the state. The APC surprisingly swept the state during the presidential elections, with the Labour Party coming second and PDP third, despite the influence of the incumbent governor Samuel Otom, who is of the PDP. The Labour Party and its candidate Patrick Dakum will be gunning for victory in Plateau State after its shocking win in the presidential election, but political observers say that it is less likely to happen this time around as the church on the plateau was instrumental to Peter Obi's victory. The church, they say, may likely shift its support to PDP and its candidate, Caleb Muftwang, in the governorship race, leaving the serving governor, Simon Lalong, and his APC candidate, Netawe Yuwada Goshwe, to struggle even harder for votes after a crushing defeat at the presidential polls. In Niger State, the focus will be on the APC governorship candidate, Mohamed Uman Bagot, a serving federal lawmaker as he squares it with the PDP Isha Liman Kantigi. The APC has remained dominant in the state and had a strong showing during the presidential elections two weeks ago as the PDP battles internal divisions. The APC hopes to retain its feet in the north central state of Kwara through incumbent governor Abdurrahman Abdurrazak, who is seeking a second term. His main challenger is PDP's Shuaib Yamen Abdullahi. But if the result of the presidential election and effort to resolve the internal wranglings in the party are not to be taken lightly, the party may retain its blue colors by remaining in the APC despite pressures by the Bukola Saraki led PDP family to upstage the Otoge political machine of Governor Abdul Rasak. Omo Bazwai Arise News. Well, thank you, Omo, for that report. And we do have now in the studio is the governorship candidate of the Social Democratic Party, that's the SDP in Benue State. Speaking of James Bengbato Mede, uh, thank you, James, for joining us tonight on the program. And of course, if you look at that report, for instance, and of course, fillers we're getting from the ground, the SDP doesn't seem to be that strong in Benue State. And if you look at also the presidential election and National Assembly, yes, you did well in Nasara State, but in Benue State, the showing was not so great. So talk to us about your chances, really, on sitting the PDP that has an incumbent governor, who, of course, we saw how his showing went. But it's about the SDP now. Yeah, about the SDP in Benue State. I would like to let you know the truth, that, yes, those analyses are being made by different analysts. Popularly, yes, we have the APC candidate appearing to be more popular, Reverend Father Alia, who mm -hmm. actually happens to be my cousin. Oh, Hyacinth. Yeah, and then, yeah, Hyacinth. The PDP candidate is the incumbent speaker of the State Assembly. However, both of them, as well as my good friend, Hema Hemby, of the Labour, that I saw just there, they are wonderful candidates, all great. But I assure you, SDP will have its way in Benue. You know, SB was there in Benue before. There has been 
this strong, very, very strong success has been recorded in Benue. But there has been in recent time calculated attempts by some people at various quarters trying to destroy trying to destroy the chances of the party in the state. In 2019, such miscreants came up. One popular candidate, Hwande, another popular candidate, Hingabe. Two were very, very, very strong in the context. At the point, it became two days to election. It was on a test day that case ended in court. There was a very big frustration. That party was supposed to make a huge record in Benin. Today, as we go, there are same kind of persons trying to also influence negativism in our struggle. We've been resilient. The courts just gave you victory just in February with regards to your internal wranglings because I know that uh, Dr. Jeffrey Kuram had taken you to court. He was challenging your emergence. So uh, you're talking about how strong the SDP is. Um, are you going into this contest really? I ask you directly as a united house or as a divided house, what efforts have you been able to make to reach out to all those who believe that you shouldn't be the flag bearer? Well, I've done so much personally going to the houses calling on them, trying to know reasons. But no have been able to give us reasons. I will let you know one thing. Some of these political parties believe they won't win elections. I keep saying this. They believe they won't win elections. So the leaders of the party see it as an opportunity. They see it as a season for them to catch whatever, whatever they can catch now before elections. Once elections are over, the season is gone. So for them, whatever you're able to bring, they can collect, they're ready there to collect and then cause challenges, cause damage to anybody that could ordinarily win the election. One Jeffrey Curran, like you mentioned, contested election with me and another, uh, one Taswadi, three of us went into the polls. I won the election, last slide. He complained. The National Secretariat agreed that we should go home and sit down on the matter. We did. We sat down in one of our Assembly House of Rep candidates. In one of the, one of the, our candidates rushed there. We sat down and settled. There, there were 52 stakeholders. These stakeholders comprised of uh, local government chairman of the party, the status quo, and all that were there that were supposed to. There were 52 members. Out of them, in the attempt of settling this matter, uh, they said they were going to voting. Out of 52, one person did not vote. Three votes went to Jeffrey Coram. I had 48 votes. Okay, so um, you're trying to let us know that your chances are very uh, promising at the elections. Okay, uh, since 1976 that uh, State was created, um, despite the several natural resources in that state, only limestone and kaolin have been commercially uh, exploited. What are you doing or what plans do you have if you actually do win the election? What plans do you have to transform the economy of that state? Animals plans. Benue has a very sound foundation laid down by the first executive governor of the state. Governor Perico, who came into administration of the state in 1979, did everything. He laid a very solid foundation. It's very firm that the state, you know, for any country or state to develop, there must be a huge aspect of tourism. Okay. That man laid a good foundation for tourism in Benue. To ben uh, Benue State and so what's owned your own blueprint. What's your own blueprint? It's on ground. Uh, can you can you uh, tell us? Right. Let's have it. Right. It is my intention to revitalize tourism in Benue to ensure a positive and cordless security in Benue. To also ensure industrialization of all levels in Benue, in Benue State. To bring agriculture, which is basically known to be the live wire of our state, mm -hmm. on the hem of affairs in the state. One thing I want to do in Benue, if I'm declared governor, if I'm sworn in, I'm sworn in as governor of Benue State, one basic thing I must do is to ensure that there is no joint account. The existing they have as a joint account, they call it Ministry for Law, Government and Chief Tansi Affairs. They call it a bureau. They, call, they confirm it to be a bureau where the evil is done to every law government. The state gov governors of various governments in their own different states have this culture. It is incumbent in Benue. They will collect money from all the state and uh, local governments. 
leaving them with just a token. So you're saying you're going to guarantee the autonomy of the local totally, government. Okay. Totally. Um, as we wrap up this conversation, you've not really been able to highlight what your plans are. As you had asked you, yeah. guys. Okay. So what experience are you bringing in uh, to this contest to ensure that, you know what, you do different from what we've seen in past administrations? Good. So one thing, there are states with different vibes. My own state is basically known to people as a civil service state, purely. The civil servants of Benue are going to enjoy their full salaries at all times. Because it is not even an, an achievement to me, as it should be, to any other person. To me, salary payment is not an achievement. It's a statutory thing that is there for whoever works, let them have their bill. That is one. I will not interfere with whatever is for uh, them as wages they will be happy. And then, in the era of industrialization, I started saying, I will ensure that Bini of old is back, and then it will grow from where I'm coming in. What was Bini of top. old? The Bini of old had every structure very functional. Like I was telling you, I'm not going to bring a different blueprint from what Aperico did. Tell us Bini of old in a few seconds. We're wrapping up this. Okay. Bini of old was one, one state that had a bank of their own called Lobby Bank. It was the only state then that had such edifice, Lobby Bank. It was managed for decades before it went into extinction through the ma malfunctioning of some other poor administrators who came in later. Then, Ben of Old had what was known as Ben. Ben was a mineral, a mineral drink. It was a wonderful mineral drink. It also had what was known, known as more breweries. There was a very strong brewery. That brewery was having both more okay. and this thing. So beer. you're talking about, uh, you know, uh, helping the people through y making use of the resources already on ground exactly. to make more money for the people. For the state, well, yes. we'll have to wish you all the best. Uh, James Ben Bato Mede, of course, uh, the Social Democratic Party governorship candidate in Benway State. And uh, all the best with the elections. Mm -hmm.